This is the continuations of chapter three of project portfolio management. This is a portfolio strategic management. Portfolio strategic management is the management of intended and emergent initiatives that are often individual at an executive level and provide and very fabric under the portfolio management is executed. It supports strategic thinking and is the basis of an effective organizations or business unit. Strategic thinking simply means asking are we doing the right things more precisely. It means Accessing whether the right things is being done using the three key requirements. Number one, a pro profound understanding of the associated environment. Number two, full alignment of all portfolio components with the visions and values of the organization. And uh, creativity is developing effective response to forces and changes that affect the fulfillment of the purpose in the context of a portfolio strategic thinking is captured in the strategic portfolio management plan this section provides information on portfolio strategic management the following major sector are address overview guiding principles portfolio strategic objectives developing portfolio strategic objectives strategic risk appetite, portfolio charter, portfolio roadmap, key portfolio components, portfolio optimization, managing strategic alignment. Number 3.1 overview. Alignment is strategic management and portfolio management enables the sick actions of an organization to be consistent with the expectation of senior management and stakeholder. Without this, there is a high risk that a portfolio will not match the overall strategy and that the program's project being undertaken will add little or no value, certainly less value than is expected. Portfolio strategic management should be considered a two-way precise in addition to the continual monitoring of strategy and investment decisions at the executive level and practice should be provide feedback on the impact and viability of such strategic decision and potential outcomes. 3.2 Guiding Principles to successfully manage a portfolio strategic approach at a mindful of the organization's strategic plan, goals, and objective needs to be undertaken, unlike what is done in program or project management in strategic management, the portfolio manager needs to maintain a long-term vision or in order to execute sound practice of decision-making risk management, and value management, among other organizational considerations of all principles outlined in Section 1.7 are important for strategic management. However, the following are especially applicable to this domain. Achieve excellence in strategic execution. Ensure that investment in portfolio components are aligned with the organizational strategy and governance practices. Balance portfolio value against overall risk. Foster a culture that embraces change and risk. Negative complexity to enable successful outcomes. Continuous acquire talent and implement professional talent management. Strategic management not only oversees and performance of the portfolio components, it also play an important role in providing feedback to all stakeholders on the success of the organization's strategies and the viability of its long-term goals and objectives. 3.3 Portfolio Strategic Objectives The Portfolio Strategic Planning 
process consists of developing a portfolio strategic plan and alignment, aligning the strategic management of the portfolio to the organization's strategy and objectives. The portfolio strategic plan explains the key components of the portfolio management life cycle, describing the key initiation, decision, planning, criteria, governance, and optimization. Considerations and execution element. The portfolio strategic plan is used to align organizational and financial structure with priorities, mission, and vision, and objectives. Typically, a portfolio strategic plan includes a vision and a mission statement, a description of the organization's long-term portfolio goals and objectives, and the means of which or the organization plan to achieve these general goals and objectives. The portfolio strategic plan should also provide performance indicators and target metrics to allow assessment of ongoing strategic alignment and tracking the progress towards achieving the strategic objectives. The portfolio strategic plan may also identify external factors that may affect the achievements of long-term portfolio goals. When defining the portfolio structure, it is important to understand the overall strategy to ensure that the right components within those business areas with the highest strategic value are included. It is also important to ensure that everyone goals of the portfolio strategic plan has at least one initiative that would lead to its realization and that the summation of the initiative outcomes under a specific strategic goal leads to 100% realizations of that strategic goals benefits. Therefore, an organization's portfolio should cover 100% of the organization's strategic goals and only the organization's strategic goals, meaning that any initiative that do not serve a specific strategic goal should be terminated. Evaluating and describing how the portfolio management activity will be aligned with the overall strategy is what defines the portfolio strategic plan, plan based on process, actions, and elements that support this evaluation and its implementation. The process actions and elements include things such as portfolio management objectives, prioritization, allocations of fund, organizational benefits, performance expectation, resources, assumptions, constraints, dependencies, rest and requirements additionally managing a portfolio is not a specific and time bound process so that expected result of the portfolio are not bound to its component but instead to what they deliver in terms of result the portfolio strategic plan is produced using organizational strategy vision and objectives the portfolio manager collaborates with the management in the governing bodies and with the stakeholder in the development of the plan. The portfolio strategic plan may support the strategic for organizational, organizational unit or function. Organizational strategy is implemented through portfolio components and ongoing operation when producing the portfolio strategic plan. The portfolio manager integrates and responds to change in the portfolio when remaining aligned with the organizational strategy, vision, and objectives. 3.4. Developing Portfolio Strategic Objectives After this, broadest strategic objectives serve to define an organization's ambition in some details. The organization's ambition is found in its mission and vision statement which together describe the main purpose of an organization and its ultimate goal. They are the steps and accomplishment that an organization complete to realize that ultimate goal. The strategic objectives from the backbone of a strategic plan, they represent a specific short-term action, one to two years, that are the result of the vision typically five or more years, and goals, usually three or more years.
a strategic objectives statement should outline what is to be achieved and the overall approach that will be taken to achieve it and the benefits of the achieving it that should focus on what is offered to customer the critical elements in a strategic objectives are measurability and crit and clarity crucially the strategic objective is guided by the organization mission 3.4.1 vision and mission statement vision and mission statement should be single thought that can be easily understood the strategic vision statement describe where the business sees itself based on the chosen strategy the strategic mission statement explain the overall approach for achieving this vision to test the effectiveness of the mission statement associated leaders managers and employees should be able to easily describe the vision and mission of the business in simple term if they cannot articulate the vision or mission then the statement is of little use the vision and mission guide the everybody activities of every person involved in the business to be effective and the statement need to be short and simple capturing the essence of what the business wishes to accomplish the vision and mission statement build the whole culture of the organization the difference between a vision statement and the mission statement is a vision is what the company aspired to be and the mission is what the company is in business to do a vision statement is an aspirational mental picture so the value the organization hopes to achieve over time regardless of change in leadership it offers a shared view of the future that excites employee a mission statement tells us what the company is currently in business to do who it does it for and how it defines an organization represents statement and its approach for the next few years mission statement may get refined as a customer and their needs change all employees should be able to articulate an organization's mission statement so they can see how their works align with them with the valuable contributes to this mission it also helps them understand and accept organizations why decision a simple vision statement might be our vision is world without cancer a simple mission statement might be our mission is to deliver outstanding value by providing high quality fishing gear to satisfy the needs of our customer and to do so the lowest position cost 3.4.2 strategic goal goals are general statement indicating what is to be achieved so they should be integrated with the vision goals are more qualitative statement rather than quantitative quantifiable target and they also need to be integrated with the mission which describes how the organization will achieve its vision some examples of strategic goals are to capture a bigger market share enter a new market comply with regulatory requirements improve profitability increase efficiency provide better customer service improve employee training and improve customer satisfaction a strategic goal should be all of the following understandable suitable acceptable and flexible understandable it is stated simply and easy to understood suitable does it fit with the vision and mission acceptable does it fit with the values of the organizations and the employees flexible can it be adapted and changed as needed a strategic goal should always center on the most important priorities of the organization to avoid losing focus and they should be designed in such a way that they don't contradict or interfere with one another 
strategic objectives whereas the vision describes the goal a like strategy is choice about how to reach that goal strategic objective can therefore be split into categorize for example profitability compliance financial resource market position legal or regulatory regulatory conformance innovation productivity physical resources human resources social responsibility value creation or customer satisfaction strategic objectives should be selected to address the major challenges and drivers of the performance organization or business unit to make strategic objectives manageable and actionable their number should be limited once the strategic objectives are identified they should be validated using the following basic criteria is the objective feasible and achievable is the objective measurable and verifiable is the objective adaptable and flexible is the objective consistent with the rest of the strategic plan one example of the strategic objective should be to increase market share by 10 percent with respect to the previous year figure in a specific geographical area within the next six months 3.4.4 strategic initiative organizations execute their stages strategies through the creations of strategic initiative comprising portfolios of program and projects to achieve a future state the process of defining strategic initiative from the organizational strategy needs to be elaborated this includes element of strategic gap analysis applications and balance scored card and the similar technique to escalate the initial components and group them under the subsidiary portfolio the portfolio components may not necessarily be interdependent or have related objectives and organizations may have more than one portfolio each addressing unique organizational strategy and objectives proposed initiative may be structured as portfolio and components are identified evaluated selected and authorized managing the necessary change should be an integral part of the planning initiative strategic initi initiatives comprise of programs and project move to the organizational towards the future state the set of initiatives frequently involves a combination of one or more of the following new product or services new business models new capabilities new markets and channels new value creation opportunities and breakthrough platform strategic risk appetite 3.5 strategic risk appetite the organization strategic risk appetite is defined as the most and type of risk that an organization is willing to take and take in order to meet in strategic objectives organizations have different risk appetites depending on their organization's culture and underlying strategic drivers as well as the individual risk appetite of their senior managers a range of risk appetites may exist for different risk categories and this appetite and or risk may change over time determinations of the strategic risk appetite should be scored considerations in approach to enterprise risk management a properly communicated appropriate risk appetite statement can help organizations achieve goals and support sustainability organizations need to take some risk threat and avoid others and similarly exploit some opportunities and ignore others some organizations may find it's easier than other to define performance standard but it is necessary for boards in all sectors to do so if they wish to express their risk appetite meaning meaningfully this question may be easier to answer for a commercial organizations 
than for the government organizations, but it actually be addressed by boards and main organization. Rest threshold constraint are not easy to define. Every organization can tolerate different levels of risk. It is important, however, for the organizations to establish a common understanding of risk and to be prepared for the likelihood and impact of known threat. Organizations should define the maximum level of risk tolerance for each area of risk before taking action. In order to manage risk effectively, the organization needs to determine what level of risk exposure is acceptable in pursuit of the strategic objectives. This is defined by measurable risk threshold that reflect the risk appetite of the organizations and other portfolio stakeholder. Risk threshold express the degree of acceptable variation around the strategic objectives. The risk appetite statement should be based on a review of the perspective and concern of all stakeholders and should address the impl implications of current organizational strategic and practices. 3.6 Portfolio Charter A portfolio charter is a document that formally authorizes the portfolio manager to apply resources to the portfolio components and should be present in every occurrence of formal portfolio strategic planning. The charter provides the portfolio structure, including the hierarchy and organizations of the portfolio programs, project, and operations. It forecasts how and when the portfolio will deliver value to the organization. Chartering a portfolio length, the portfolio to an organizational strategy and other portfolios will describe how the portfolio will deliver value to the organization. The charter may include portfolio objectives, portfolio justification, portfolio sponsor, portfolio management rules and responsibilities, key and major stakeholder, stakeholder expectations and requirements, communication requirements, high level scope, Benefits, critical success criteria, resources, high level timeline and assumption, constraint, dependencies, risk, and related organizational strategic objectives. In creating the portfolio charter, the following elements should be taken into account portfolio strategic plan, portfolio process assets, enterprise, environmental factor. The portfolio strategic plan is when developing the portfolio charter and defining the portfolio structure, it is important to be guided by the portfolio strategic plan, the information in the portfolio strategic plan that is necessarily for developing the portfolio charter includes the portfolio vision and objectives, the benefits expected, and the key risk dependencies and constraints. When the portfolio strategic plan and prioritization model is useful as a decision framework to structure the portfolio components. Portfolio process assets is to develop the portfolio charter and portfolio manager should leverage the portfolio plans, policies, procedure, and guidelines and any existing documentation of the stakeholder relationship scope benefits and portfolio goals. Enterprise environmental factor is enterprise environmental factors may consist of organizational environment and government governmental variables that may contribute to and constrain the process of developing the portfolio charter. The portfolio structure in the charter may need to align with the organizational accounting structure or with the functional structure of the organization, example, by organizational unit or business unit. Paragraph 3.7 Portfolio Roadmap The portfolio roadmap is a visual high-level artifact, example usually a graphical representation that details how the portfolios and its relevant components are tied to the strategic goals of the organization. 
the roadmap should be updated at least in every portfolio re-optimization and approval period and or when major changes are made to the portfolio. An example is shown in figure 3-1. Portfolio roadmap high-level example. A strategic goal, go to product and goals and services. How many years? Years 1 to 3 years, 4 to 5, 80% of financial target met and 100% of financial target meet portfolio one components a b portfolio three components f portfolio two components c d a example of portfolio roadmap 3.8 key portfolio components a portfolio is built using a set of subsidiary portfolios programs project and operational activities managed in the art coordinated way improving their effectiveness to provide the expected result for the organizations. The portfolio components may not necessarily be interdependent, nor they are necessarily executed at the same time to enable effective management of the portfolio. The result expected or realized of its components should be measured, rank, and prioritized. The size of the portfolio sets of components will differ for each portfolio or it can be changed during the existence of the portfolio to be effective in delivering the expected portfolio result and in re a resource constrained government it is important to limit or maintain a manageable number of components within the capabilities of the organizations a key components in a portfolio is one that contributes in a highly significant manner to the realizations of the desired benefits. To improve the effectiveness of the portfolio, it is important to establish what the key components of the portfolio are. Once those key components are identified, the portfolio manager team should assess its own effort on managing them and take action to improve its overall organization. 3.8.1 Evaluating Portfolio Key Components The evaluating process may take place on a regular basis. It is performed by reviewing the current set of components included in the portfolio and selecting and evaluating those that are important for the portfolio's overall result. The process of defining the key portfolio components requires portfolio knowledge of the strategic objectives and the portfolio's contribution to them based on the portfolio's current internal and external environment. Therefore, identifying the key components of the portfolio is dependent on reviewing and updating the main strategies, objectives of the organizations and the portfolio. The evaluation process can be triggered by several activities. The most common ones are a change becomes necessary in the organizational strategy and objectives because of internal or external factor. A gap forms between the overall expected portfolio result and the actual result. An ongoing key component is delayed close or has a major change on its validated plans a new portfolio components is validated and new opportunity example a new technology is emerged besides the contribution value of the components there are other factors that needs to be evaluated in order to define a key components of a portfolio among them are the following Realization factor, organization's objectives oriented factor, external factors. Realization factors, this includes cost, duration, resource, capacity, expected result, complexity, organizational resistance to change, and so forth. Organization's objectives oriented factor. This represents the ratio between the positive and the negative effect on strategic objectives being impacted. 
the ease of assessing result visibility and the result realization timeline. External factor. This includes contribution to the organization's image, contribution to the health, healthness of the community, country, and world, and resistance to change from the surrounding community. Evalu the evaluations of key portfolio variables as is the process often overlooked when the key component is evaluated even through this variables are often determining factor in the success of portfolio management each components potentially has a negative impact on other objectives for example a key components could be to develop a state of the arts marketing campaign that will positively impact the organization's image and benefits. At the same time, the efficiency objectives of the organization will be negatively impacted by the components because there is a threat due to the uniqueness of the expected result or an organization may have an efficiency objective that can be attained with a lean project but at the same time, the realizations of this project could have negative effect on the quality of the free of the work environment or may create a resistance to change that will override the expected benefits. 3.8.2 Selecting Portfolio Key Components The selections of the key components is crucial in portfolio success, the effectiveness of those of choice of the main components largely depends on the visibility and management process of the organization's strategic objectives. In relation to the portfolio, without this information, the portfolio may not define which components are important because the portfolio has no quantifiable expectation. Validating the portfolio against the organization's strategy helps ensure that the way are in alignment. Proposed portfolio components or current inventory of the work if they're not aligned with the overall strategy are deemed unlikely to deliver intended value are not recommended for inclusions in the portfolio except as unfunded backlog components. When a current component is found, to no longer be in the first pit of the portfolio, it is likewise close. This helps maximize the return of investment of resource, example, human, financial, asset, intellectual. Factors to consider includes the following organization strategy and objectives, inventory work, portfolio process assets, organizational process assets, Enterprise Environmental Factor Organizational Strategy and Objectives is the organizational strategy and objectives provides long-term directions, vision, goals, and objectives. The input can also be organizational strategic plan document that contains the vision, mission, strategy, and objectives with various level of detail depending upon the purpose and the scope of the plan within the organization. Inventory of work. An organization may not have a portfolio that is a prioritized list of components. However, it may have an inventory of work that could develop into a portfolio. The list of portfolio components or inventory of work needs to be aligned with the organization's strategic objectives to ensure that they are valid and able to meet the objectives for which they are created. Components and their dependencies should also be clearly understood and documented as an efficient portfolio typically includes as many interdependencies as practical to minimize the effort to meet components objectives. For example, a derivative product may rarely on both and early generations manufactured process and the demonstrated feasibility of a key subsystem from a dependent research project. As a result, the risk of conducting this project is lower, but this project cannot be completed 
to plan unless the, in, the, the, the dependent activities are successful. Portfolio process assets. Portfolio assets. Process assets may contain relevant data and information regarding the portfolio and guidance on authorizing and controlling the portfolio required for optimizing the portfolio. In developing the portfolio structure and portfolio charter, the portfolio management team needs to know the process assets that stakeholders are willing to provide. Example includes portfolio funding, portfolio resources. Portfolio funding understand the financial resource that the stakeholders are willing to commit and the expected return in investment as critical in structuring the portfolio and portfolio resources, understanding the available resource committed to the portfolio assets, assist the portfolio management team in structuring the portfolio, taking resource constraint and dependencies into consideration. Organizational process assets. Organizational process assets includes any of all processes related to the assets from an organization involved in a portfolio that can be used to influence the portfolio's success. Process assets includes but are not limited to formal or informal plans, organizations, standard policies, methodologies, processes, and procedures knowledge assets, intellectual property, patterns, know-how, etc., guidelines, lesson learned, templates, forms, knowledge and information from historical programs or project records and documents, example, organizational knowledge base, annual report, and key performance indicator KPI from management portfolios, in the past for benchmarking purposes. Enterprise environmental factor. Enterprise environmental factors are organizational and environmental variable that can be contribute to the determinations of how to manage certain aspects of portfolio. Some factors to consider are organizational culture or structure. Tools, personnel, infrastructure, marketplace condition, governmental regulation, stakeholder risk tolerance, and economic conditions and forecast. 3.9 Portfolio Optimization Portfolio optimization is the ongoing practice by which benefits, risk, and resources are balanced and optimized it should be in the integral parts of any effective organization planning process to ensure that there is alignment between the supply, example, human, financial, asset, intellectual, and demand, example, project, maintenance, regulatory changes. With multiple projects either, either underway on the pipelines and any one time, the balance of prioritized resource alignment allocations and overall bandwidth management should be effectively managed to avoid overruns of the time and money and over of human and technology resource. To understand how to optimize the portfolio and to manage expectation, Optimize risk, exposure, and plan for delivery challenge. Portfolio optimization practice should be used and integrated into the organization's annual planning process. This practice took across all components of the portfolio, illuminates the dependencies and constraints across the portfolio, and identifies the most effective bonding of the project where synergies and leverage points are defined. Examples of typical challenges that organizations may expect related to portfolio optimization include portfolio and resource not being aligned with objectives and strategies, 
lack of transparency or access to good accurate data, resources being mixed out as a result of time waste on too many low value projects, difficulty in adjusting portfolio quickly in response to market change, assessing impact of the change in one of the components to other components, if any example transfer of resources among components, schedule implications and cyclic impact of reprioritizations or optimization. Some considerations for optimizing a portfolio includes the following, select and prioritize the right components, forecast the, po the cost of delivering the project portfolio, Provide real-time status reporting from, for execute, initiate project governance for consistent process, processes, achieve a complete view of all portfolio components, select and prioritize the right components, not every component has the same urgency. It is important to recognize the sequence of the components completion based on the organizational goal and to be able to facilitate the higher priority components first followed by those lower on the list. Management also use their insight into these processes. Some items cannot be quantified. Forecast the cost of delivering the project portfolio because profit, profitability or cost efficiency is key for the successful organization, it is important to track the cost of portfolios on all levels and monitor them accordingly. There should be visibility to track a program project and determine if the program project should be canceled based on cost exceeding and benefits of completing it. Provide real-time status reporting for executive. Executive are often the one who make the business decision and it is important for them to have real-time visibility of the status of components in order to make the best decisions for the organizations. This portfolio components status report can eliminate many risks involving involves with project issue that have not been committed because fairness and non-biased information are key for the best decision. It is important to ensure consistent portfolio components reports within the portfolio by standardized project and program management practices. For example, executive may receive biased information from portfolio components if there is no standardized process in place. Initiate project governance for consistent processes. Ensure that individuals and the organizations are held accountable for missed deadline and wrongfully executed project by ensuring that the reporting and the status of the project remains consistent across the entire organizations, making it easier to track the outcomes of project and resulting in greater efficiency overall using governance functions, oversight control, integration decision making, achieve complete view of all portfolio components. It is important for the organization to have a single true versions when it comes to project status. This eliminates question and help individual prioritize and support the project that needs attention. 3.10 Managing Strategic Alignment Managing strategic alignment enables the portfolio manager to respond to change in organizational strategy and enhance the ability to accept and act on significant strategic change that impact portfolio planning and management. A strategy shift the current state should be compared with the future state, which may be evolutionary or incremental in nature. A gap may result in realignment of resources or adjustment in the portfolio components, make supports the strategic change, change in portfolios are a normal occurrence and depending on the significance of the changes, portfolio documents may need to be re reworked to ensure continued alignment with strategy. This repeated adaptation is on contrast to the progressive elaboration required in the project management. This 
is an aligning process to identify the gap between the current and the future state and to analyze the impact and response to strategic change and change in resources, people, processes, and assets and technology. Strategic objectives and goals are analyzed to determine which part of portfolio structure will address a specific strategic goal. The current existing portfolio or inventory of work needs to, to be analyzed to determine what work or component is to continue or close and which component will be added. The technique includes the analysis of the drivers and strategic chains to determine the desired contributions of the initiative to the strategic objectives and determine benefits and measurable contribution considering financial resource knowledge and the risk constraint. 3.10.1 Considerations when managing strategic impact <coughs> Stakeholder analysis is critical in managing strategic chains because it helps ensure continuity and align key stakeholders' expectation. With the changing strategy and resulting portfolio alignment, the chains may also lead to identify new stakeholder or removing existing stakeholder. The technique used to analyze stakeholder expectation and requirements may include interviewing senior executive stakeholder and analyzing requirements and expectation to strategic change. This may include identifying their stakeholders by individual or group and determining expectations and requirements, evolving condition newly recognized pain points, problems or desire, change impact issue, risk tolerance, changing external governance, and rules such as environmental rules and concern. A gap analysis compares the current portfolio mix and components with the new strategic directions and the future organizational vision. This is essential to properly manage strategic change. This analysis determines the gaps and chains need in the portfolio mix so that the components may add in chains or terminated. A readiness assessment gauge, the ability of the organizations to perform the steps necessarily to bridge the gap between the current portfolio state and the future state. The assessment determines if, when, what, and how the implementing the chains and points out any needs not yet addressed that are required in order to bring out bring about the change. 3.10.2 the impact of strategic change. A change in the related strategy can have a limited or a far-reaching impact on the portfolio, its components and or underlying principles. This includes but are not limited to the following. The portfolio strategic plan is updated and needs to be revisited when future strategic changes are made. Various elements of the portfolio strategic plan may need to change to reflect the organizational strategy chains such as prioritization model, benefits assumption, constraint, dependencies, and risk. The portfolio charter is updated and revisited when future strategic chains are made. The portfolio structure in the charter may need to change to reflect new strategic objectives as well as key or major stakeholder and their communication requirements. When a strategic change is made, components may be added, modified, delayed, or terminated from the portfolio to enable alignment with the new strategy. Based on the impact of the strategic change, the portfolio roadmap is updated, taking into consideration the new future vision and resulting change in the portfolio components, timelines, and dependencies. Portfolio management plan updated 
may be need be needed because of change in management approach priorities organizational structures and other aspects of the portfolio management plan that may result from the strategic change updates to the stakeholder engagement communication management performance and risk section may also be required as a result of the stakeholder gap and readiness assessment the portfolio process assets are updated when strategic change impact portfolio plans and processes these assets includes information available from historic files on previous strategic change to the portfolio related people processes and technology performance metrics risk management and lesson learned database portfolio funding structure financial management plan may need to be updated if warranted access the integrated and maturity characteristic of the organizations to facilitate successful change chapter 4 portfolio governance this section explains what governance is, what is the base on its guiding principles, how governance is implemented in terms of practices, and how governance affect activities differ from management activities. Understanding and implementing an effective portfolio governance frameworks guides the portfolio decision-making processes in the interest of all stakeholders while adhering to the governance principles of the organization. The following major section are address. 4.1 Overview 4.2 What is the portfolio governance? 4.3 Guiding principles 4.4 The concept of governance 4.5 Effective portfolio governance design factor 4.6 Portfolio governance rules 4.1 Overview the term governance is increasingly used in the field of portfolio, program, and project management, but the term and what is represent is frequently con confused with notion associated with the management. This section provides clarity on the concepts of the government versus management. The importance of the principles and how they impact both governance and management activities and how portfolio governance principles impact program and project within the portfolio in addition to this value as part of components-based methodologies to increase the chances of the component success. Governance activities encapsulate and enable the applications of the portfolio principles to the actual work of portfolio maintenance management say section 1.7 for the list of the portfolio management principles that underpin this standard 4.2 what is the portfolio governance portfolio governance is a set of the process practices function and processes within a framework based on the set principles that are the fundamental norms, rules, or values that guide portfolio management activities in order to optimize investment and meet organizational strategic and operational goals. The term governance frameworks includes oversight decision-making control and integration function by which governance processes and tasks are directed towards the achievement of portfolio governance objectives. 4.3 Guiding Principles this section on governance is very different from the other section on this standard because governance is the framework within which portfolio management works, whereas other aspects of portfolio management are associated with the definition, implementations, and executions of the portfolio within the governance framework. This subtle difference also reflect with guiding principles are used to establish effective portfolio governance. Section 1.7 lists eight principles <clears throat> relating to portfolio management. However, one principle directly relates to the governance, enables transparency, responsibility, accountability, sustainability, and fairness. Four point for the concept of governance. 
portfolio governance is established based on the principles, roles, and values that are desirable and guide the establishment of portfolio governance practices within the organization. Governance can be viewed from different perspectives as a system of control, as a set of processes, and as a set of the processes and relationship. Governance is very different from management. Governance is associated with decision-making, oversight, control, and integration, whereas management is described as working within the limitations set by the governance frameworks, which the overall aim of achieving the organizational objectives. Four point four point one portfolio governance impact on program and project. When establishing the portfolio governance practice of the portfolio, including the components, program, project, and operations, it is important to understand and influence the underlying governance principles and governance objectives of the components to ensure that they integrate and align to the principles and objectives of the portfolio. To achieve this, the components, program, and project methodologies should include governance principles along with the management principles. Governance principles should help avoid and also resolve ambiguities, issues, and conflict that may arise during components life cycle, especially when endeavor how a long outcomes predictability in the complex environment. Figure 4 does one show the flow of the governance principles down through the organizations which influence the governance objectives at the portfolio program, project, and operation levels. These governance principles helps create the value system of an organization. Senior management, typically the board at the board level, defines organizational governance based on the fundamental norms roles and values of the organizations which are used as the basis of development portfolio governance practices. Portfolio governance practices incorporates the governance principles of the organization. They flow down to the portfolio components to provide control, integration, decision-making, and general oversight. The, import, the implementations of portfolio, program, project, and operations Governance is accomplished through governance rules, which are described in section 4.6. The effectiveness of the governance practice throughout the portfolio is dependent on the mentalities, rationalities, and way of interaction chosen by those in governance rules to implement, maintain, and change the governance structure. So figure 4 does one governance hierarchy including principles and objectives. A, B, C. B A, business goal and governance principles. B, governance practices including oversight, control, integrations, and decision. C, management activities, performance report, change request, escalated issues, and risk. Number one, implemented via several rules, see section 4.6 for portfolio governance rules, implemented via several rules, see the standard program management and the PM book guide. So this is the governance principles com consist of transparency, responsibility, accountability, fairness, and sustainability. So from the top, organizational government, governance, C and E, C and the composed of governance objective, portfolio governance, and go to, go and back to portfolio B, portfolio B, governance objectives, composed of prog program governance and project governance, program, project, 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 ABC, ABC, okay, this is a graph with corresponding plan, hierarchy, including principles and governance, and figure four does one. 4.4.2 Portfolio Governance and Other Terms in Portfolio Management The Portfolio Governance Performance Domain as shown as one of the six Performance Management Domain, see Figure 1-3. 
governance impact all over the portfolio domain including the portfolio supporting processes in terms of the underlying governance principles and applied governance practices. The governance domain is accomplished of four governance function that represents the processes and activities that may be repeated throughout the portfolio and its components, decision-making oversight, control, and integration. The decision-making function includes the processes and activities that provide the overall governance structure for delegations of management authority for the portfolio and its components. The oversight function provides the governance processes and activities to support the leadership and directions of the portfolio and its components. The control function provides the processes and activities used to monitor, measure, and report on the portfolio and its components. The integration functions provides the processes and activities to support the strategic alignment of the portfolio and its components. Effective Portfolio Governance Design Factor Chapter 4.5 Portfolio governance design will have a significant influence on whether the portfolio can consistently meet its objectives throughout its life cycle. In extreme cases, governance practices that are not based on organizational governance practice and are inappropriate from the type of portfolio will increase the risk of the components, failure, and jeopardize the overall success of the portfolio. These are many factors to consider when designing portfolio governance practice. Common factor to consider when optimizing portfolio governance includes the following legislative environment, regulatory environment, decision-making hierarchy, alignment with the organizational governance, Alignment with organizational structure. Legislative environment. Portfolios contains many components, some of which may be significantly influenced by changing legislation. This may benefit from the governance designed for direct interactions with legislative authorities. Regulatory environmental. Regulatory environment. May organizations are regulated with their industry or area. Therefore, their portfolio governance should be designed to ensure that proposed components for portfolio inclusion comply with regulations, both terms of component selections and throughout the components life cycle. Decision-making hierarchy. For the components of it's important that decision-making responsibility is at the level where competence, accountability, and authority reside, there are complex sides to this approach. For example, in organizations where employees are not ultimately accountable for their action or are not made to feel accountable for their actions, where there will be a greater need for controlling practices in other circumstances and experience and respected components manager and team may be given greater autonomy and decision-making power than it's typically given to components manager at the similar risk level. Alignment with the organizational governance. Portfolio governance should align with the organizational governance in terms of organizational principles. Portfolio governance objectives should in principles align with organizational governance and should also reflect the nature of portfolio and its specific objectives. <clears throat> Particular care should be taken for portfolios belonging to organizations that are joint ventures to align to the governing principles of all parents entities when designing portfolio governance practices consideration should also be given to type of governance practices that should be in place for the portfolio components factors such as contracting of resources risk of components failure especially for high-risk components, 
components level of importance from law to strategically important and program and project management offices, BMO, and how they support components from the governance perspective and components life cycle and the experience of the components team applying the life cycle processes alignment with the organizational culture organizational culture should be taken into account throughout the design of the portfolio governance as culture influence the way the way thinking of the acceptance of governance paragraph 4.6 portfolio governance rules Establishing an appropriate collaborative relationship among the individual's responsibility for portfolio governance is critical to the success of the portfolio in delivering the value the organization desire. Portfolio managers leverage the portfolio governance board to help establish organizational condition that supports the goal of the portfolio. Governance board activities includes monitoring, escalated portfolio risk, that may impact the financial value of the portfolio. The portfolio components makes use to achieve the organizational strategy and objectives and the impact of the organizational capabilities. The capabilities establishing a collaborative relationship among the member of the portfolio governance board of which the portfolio manager or portfolio owner is often the chair is also critical to the ultimate success of the organization. Portfolio managers may be assigned responsibility and accountability for the effective managing and portfolio in pursuit of organizational goal as authorized by the Portfolio Governance Board. When doing so, a portfolio manager assumes a responsible rules of the governance practices within the governance domain. The accountability of the governance rules may reside with the head of the business unit the Chief Operating Officer, Chief Strategy Officer, Chief Financial Officer, Chief Information Officer, or other similar executive rule. Portfolio governance structures are best defined in a manner that is specific to the principles and needs of each organization and the requirements of the components within the portfolio. The relationship between the portfolio governance and portfolio management functions often is managed by assigning key rules to individuals who are parts of those functions and recognized as key stakeholder. Portfolio is sponsor 4.6.1 Portfolio is sponsor. The portfolio is sponsor is the individual who is responsible for championing the applications of organizational resources to help meet the portfolio's goals and objectives, and realizing its intended value contribution. The portfolio sponsor rules frequently is filed by executive member of the portfolio management board who has a senior role in directing the organizational and its investment decision, and who is personally vested in the success of the portfolio components, and therefore the value that the portfolio is creating for the organization's in many organizations, the Portfolio Sponsor Act as the chairpersons of the Portfolio Governance Board. Typically, responsibilities of the Portfolio Sponsor are to ensure that the portfolio goals and objectives are aligned with a strategic vision, provide oversight and feedback on the delivery of the benefits to enable success of the portfolio, remove barriers and ob obstacles to portfolio success, ensure funding related approvals provide the necessary resource and manage interactions between senior management and the portfolio management team with regards to the portfolio activities as a member of a chair of the portfolio governance board the sponsor is integral to the fulfillment of governance responsibilities it is critical that the organization allow the portfolio sponsor to perform the role effectively. Sufficient time and resources should be provided to enable success, which often require relief from other duties. 
the skills and experience of the portfolio sponsor impact the impact effectiveness of the portfolio. Often, the portfolio sponsor is required to drive change through the organizations so that the operations can accommodate capabilities delivered by the portfolio components and secure the available benefits leading to value realization. The sponsor is integral to the communication and stakeholder processes. Typically, an effective portfolio sponsor exhibits the following skill sets and background. Organization's wide perspective. Ability to influence senior stakeholder. Ability to work across different stakeholder group to find mutually beneficial solution. Leadership skills. Decision-making authority and effective communication skills. 4.6.2 Portfolio Governance Board Most organizations seek to ensure appropriate portfolio governance by establishing a portfolio governance board to determine the governance practices and provide appropriate leadership, oversight, and decision-making. Portfolio Governance Board improve the likelihood that the portfolio governance domain is based on the government governance principles that guide the establishment of the governance practices across portfolio program and project. The board should be well positioned to efficiently address governance issue or question that may arise during the portfolio life cycle. Portfolio governance board are often composed of executive level stakeholder selected for their strategic insight, business area, knowledge, functional, responsibilities, operational accountabilities, responsibilities for managing the organization's portfolio and for the abilities to represent important stakeholder groups. In addition, in some organization, the governance board may also be responsible for some portfolio management tasks. In such cases, portfolio governance board are often staffed by individual who are either individually or collectively recognized as having the organizational insight and decision-making authority that are critical to the establishment of the portfolio goals, strategy, and operational plans. Often, portfolio governance board includes senior leader from the functional group responsible for supporting significant element of the portfolio, including, for example, the organizational executive and leader responsible for supporting the portfolio components. The Portfolio Governance Board ensures that the portfolio is executed in an, in an environment with appropriate organizational knowledge and expertise and will supported by the governance framework and empower those with decision-making authority. Typical governance responsibilities include Determining the governance frameworks with includes oversight, decision-making, control, and integration functions by which governance processes and take are directed towards the achievement of governance objectives. Approving governance-related policies and processes, establishing component selection categorization, prioritization and authorization criteria and reviewing and remediating escalated issue and risk related to governance. Responsibilities of governance board that also have a management responsibility typical include ensuring that the portfolio strategic plan align with the organizational strategic and operational goals, considering and balancing the degree of organizational change required to achieve portfolio value providing executive support in portfolio, program, and project processes, alignment, and expectation, providing leadership and making enforcing carrying out and communicating decision, defining key performance targets and threshold, influencing and directing multiple areas such as organizational communication, external reporting, funding, and investment measure, and strategic directions for new product and services. Controlling allocations of resources in accordance with the organization's strategic priorities and operational needs. Determining risk 
and re or reward including the financial investment return and portfolio value reviewing and resolving conflicting goals and objectives defining key messages to be communicated to stakeholder and the organizations reviewing performance and propose recommendation to adjust the portfolio and reviewing and, re and remediating escalated issue and risk related to the management of the portfolio. The small organizations, a single executive may take on all of these responsibilities rather than convening a full portfolio governance board oversight committee or board of directors with multiple individuals. 4.6.3 Portfolio Audit Organization Portfolio governance includes the assignment of responsibility for ensuring that the components managers know that plan and ad hoc audit may be required or desired based on the specific nature of the organization's audit assessment may be conducted by an internal or an external auditing body and include organizational and components subcomponents compliance with approved or mandated business or program or project management processes components audit are frequently focused on finances management and governance practices risk management practices strategic alignment quality assurance and quality control and components documentation portfolio in instigated audit may delegate responsibility to the components governance boards or creating organizational or components specific plans for audits to be used by the components team such plan often provide details on organizational policies regarding audit expectations and preparedness standardized audit processes anticipated schedules for known internal or external audits roles and responsibilities of components staff regarding the conduct of audits and policies for review and communication for audit result. Audit are sometimes viewed within the portfolio components as time-consuming endeavor that burden the components. It should be noted that audits are often valuable measures of components quality that helps the components manager portfolio manager and other stakeholders identify areas of concern, thereby reducing the risk of triggering corrective action. Also, an audit is a direct communication channel to senior management, allowing clear messages to reach the audit review team that otherwise may be blocked or filtered. The audit support provided by the government's functions therefore contribute significantly to the evil eventual success of the components and the long-term success of the portfolio 4.6.4 other roles other roles required to support for portfolio organizational and processes change includes supporting portfolio governance and executions of portfolio components to ensure that defined goals are being met supporting the portfolio governance team to determine the impact of changes Supporting any changes impacting the outcomes of the program and project, representing the functional area on the governing body when applicable, and supporting portfolio governance related organizational chains. Chapter 5 Portfolio Capacity and Capability Management. This section covers the portfolio capacity and capability management performance domain as it relates to portfolio management. The objectives of portfolio capacity and capability management is to ensure that the portfolio's capacity and capability demands are in align with the portfolio objectives and can be supported or met by the organization's resource capacities and capabilities, thus enabling successful portfolio execution and expected portfolio return. The following major sections are addressed. 5.1 Overview 5.2 Guiding Principles 5.3 Capacity Management, 5.4 Capacity Planning, 5.5 Supply and Demand Management, 5.6 Supply and Demand Optimization, 5.7 Organizational Capabilities, 5.8 Capability Assessment, 5.9 Capability Development, 
5.10 performance reporting and analytics, 5.11 balance capacity and capability. 5.1 overview. The capacity and capability management functions plays a critical role in the organization's overall portfolio management from strategic planning to portfolio selections and optimization through portfolio executions to realizing the resulting value to the organization's effective and efficient capacity and capability management bridges the gap between an organizational overall strategy and the attainment of the specific business objectives through the monitoring and controlling of the executions or programs and project effort managed within the portfolio structures. Terms are described as follow. Capacity and Capability Management the comprehensive frameworks based on the set of the guiding principles consisting of a set of tools and practices to identify, allocate, and optimize resource for maximizing resource utilizations and minimizing resource conflict in portfolio execution. Capacity and capability management in the context of portfolio management implies all aspects of resources such as staff, capital, technology, equipment, etc. Capacity management address what types of resource are needed, how many are needed, and when resources are needed to support portfolios. Capability management elaborates the, what aspects of resource capacity are available and address the attributes, competence, and skills associated with the resources and organizational supports of portfolios. Capacity and Capability Management, Capacity Management, Capability Management. The objective of Portfolio Capacity and Capability Management is to determine the optimal balance between the organization can do now or its capacity and what the organizations can potentially do or its capability. Portfolio capacity and capability management maximize resource utilization and minimize conflict for successful portfolio execution. Sound practices around portfolio selection and execution discuss decision-making, change management, risk management, value management, and benefits management have a direct impact on resource capacities and capabilities. Interdependencies among the portfolio components drive complexity and those affect resources as well. Portfolio capacity and capability manage focuses on the human financial assets and intellectual capital resources an organization uses to execute portfolio components. Those each organization has an ideal potential as what it can be accomplished and what can be done now. Given an entire set of organization demands and priorities. Interdependencies among portfolio components drive complexity and those affect resources as well. Portfolio capacity and capability management focus on the human financial asset and intellectual capital resources an organization used to execute portfolio components. Those each organization has an ideal potential as to what it can be accomplished and what can be done now given an entire set of organizational demand and priorities. The portfolio manager needs to look across the organizations to identify the program and supporting projects that will be in the portfolio to meet the strategic objectives of the organization. This program and supporting project should also be ex executable by balancing the portfolio's demand among the organization's capacity and capability to achieve the business goals for the portfolio and associated value. Balancing the organization's capacity and capability is not a simple task. The integrations of programs and projects within the portfolio to meet strategic objectives 
is complex and involves many iteration shifts among the organizations, its programs, and supporting projects. A portfolio should be understood as a complex adaptive system rather than as isolated or even simply connected components, capacity and capability management involve aspects that shape the portfolio and allow portfolio managers to plan, monitor, and control the executions of portfolios to meet organizational strategic goals and aggregate investment, performance, and benefits realization. 5.2 Guiding Principles Organizations, irrespective of size, complexity of nature, of the business environment need to define and embrace a set of guiding principles to be effective with capacity and capability management and succeed at the portfolio level. All of the principles outlined in Section 1.7 are relevant to portfolio capacity and capability management. However, the following are especially noteworthy because they have profound the direct impact on resources to successfully execute the portfolio. Exercise active and decisive leadership for the optimization of resource utilization. Achieve excellence in strategic execution. Balance portfolio value against overall risk and navigate complexity to enable success outcomes. The decisions in this section reflect these principles as the underlying basis for effective capacity and capability management. 5.3 Capacity Management Capacity management is one of the most complex and critical areas within portfolio management. It addresses the overall resource, demand, and portfolios and their components. Capacity is the organization's ability to fulfill aggregate resource demand for successfully executing a planned portfolio of initiatives. An organization's capacity of resource needs for portfolio execution occur primarily across four major categories. Human capital, financial capital, assets, intellectual capital. Human capital, availability of human resource to support the portfolio. Financial capital, availability of fund to support the portfolio. Assets, availability of physical assets such as machinery, office space, factory sites, etc. Intellectual capacity, capital, available, availability of patient copyrights, etc. Each of these resource categories require throughout planning analysis and active management to successfully execute the portfolio and achieve associated goals and objectives. These resource categories are critically important and close correlate with one another. Ratios and relevance depends on the industry and portfolio mix. Capacity management seek to address conflict related to the resource demand of portfolios and their respective components. It helps identify what resources are needed how many are needed and when resources are needed to support the portfolio including ongoing optimization to maximize utilizations and minimize conflict. The what aspect of resource capacity management are further elaborated by capability management which address the attributes, competence, and skills associated with resources outside of resource capability other critical organizational capabilities should consider which resources directly contribute to successful portfolio execution. Figure 5-1 represent the capacity and capability management components of portfolio management. So capacity and capability management bridging strategic intent to value realization. So in this one is uh, strategic plan, business priorities, portfolio in initiatives and portfolio roadmap. So in capacity management is composed of capacity planning, demand management, demand optimization, reporting and analytics. In the reporting analytics, it will go to listen learn knowledge base. And the capacity management, it will go to balance and optimize 
while the capability management it will go to it will compose of capabilities assessment build new capabilities sustain existing capabilities reporting and analytics so this is the portfolio execution so reporting analytics it will go to listen learn also capacity management for portfolio involves methodologically methodically de developing an overall profile of portfolio secure demand and in available supply of resources analyzing and aligning the supply of resources to the portfolio needs measuring and monitoring resource demand and supply throughout the portfolio execution and executing chains as needed for the portfolio to perform at the optimal level of targeted this benefits or value realization capacity ma management use a comprehensive and integrated approach for resource management it encompasses the following four elements capacity planning supply and demand management demand optimization and reporting and analytics capacity planning this element entails the forecasted forecasting of resource demand and the available supply of the resource for portfolio execution based on the available information in the portfolio roadmap strategic plans historical data etc supply and demand management this element involves analysis and resource allocation for portfolio components to balance supply and demand demand optimization this element involves ongoing measurement and the monitoring of resources for the need course directions and adjustment during the portfolio execution reporting and analytics these elements involves identifying and capturing data and associated analysis for the trend and pattern to aid with portfolio decision making capacity management for elements collectively enables the organization to execute the portfolio and obtain targeted portfolio benefits based on the approved resource level of constraint those driving value for the organizations the components of capacity management are discussed in more details in section 5.4 through 5.6 capacity planning capacity planning allows all for all understanding of resource needs by measuring portfolio components against the availability capacity of the organizational resources ensuring that the organizations can successfully execute its business initiative as identified in the portfolio from the portfolio perspective overall demands and available supply should be identified and compiled as an overall supply and demand portfolio for resource analysis and allocation to follow up as parts of demand management a portfolio supply and demand profiles provides a consolidated and holistic view of forecasted resources it also captured the risk attitude and thrust threshold is specific to store resource and investment which are essential in defining resource allocation and making trade off decision for portfolio components ranking prioritization selections and ongoing balancing and optimizations of the overall portfolio an integrated review of the organizational strategic plan risk management plans organizational process assets portfolio process assets and enterprise environmental factors provides essential information in developing an aggregate and comprehensive forecast of demand and the available supply to support the portfolio aggregate supply and demand profiles highlight the resource capacity available from the organizations across the human financial assets and intellectual dimension includes boundaries and constraint and provides valuable guidance in portfolio execution and portfolio governance to select and found portfolio components while accounting for the entire portfolio capacity planning also needs to accommodate special instances when the portfolio may have mandated or legislative 
initiatives and exceed the capacity or capability limits of the organizations. Depending on the organization's risk profile, capacity planning may have contingency reserve for unplanned portfolio components and may come up during business cycle. The overall portfolio supply and demand profile derived through capacity planning provides a consolidated and holistic view of supply and demand. It helps define the resource allocations and trade-off criteria for ranking prioritization, prioritizing and selecting profile components and the, the ongoing balancing and optimizations of the portfolio. 5.5 Supply and Demand Management Supply and demand management involves analysis and resource allocations for portfolio components to balance supply and demand. The alignment between overall supply and demand begins with the throughout analysis to support resource allocation for portfolio components. Analysis provides a critical decision frameworks to be utilized for resource allocation during a portfolio selection, authorizing and funding. A supply and demand profiles provides foundational information for the needed capacity and capability analysis and prerequisite for corresponding allocation. Capacity and capability analysis is essential for studying and capability of resource, example is skill set and certifications, matching them with the portfolio components objectives and goals and translating the capability into capacity that can meet the portfolio demand. 5.5 Supply and Demand Management Supply and Demand Management involves analysis and resource allocation for portfolio components to balance supply and demand. The alignment between overall supply and demand begins with through analysis to support resource allocation for portfolio components Analysis provides a critical decision frameworks to be utilized for resource allocation during portfolio selection, authorizing, and funding. A supply and demand profile provides foundation information for the needed capacity and capability analysis, a prerequisite for corresponding allocation. Capacity and capability analysis is essential for studying the capability of resource, example skill set and certification matching them with the portfolio components, objectives, and goals, and translating the capability into the capacity that can meet the portfolio on demand. 5.5.1 Supply and Demand Analysis Supply and Demand Analysis is performed to understand the human, financial assets, and intellectual capital, capacity, and capability accessible in order to select fund and execute portfolio components. Capability is a specific competency that enables an organization to execute components and deliver result. Capacity and capability analysis, which drives the decision criteria for the resource allocations, may include scenario analysis, quantitative and qualitative analysis, and risk analysis. Following the supply and demand analysis, an organization can take appropriate action based on the drivers of the portfolio when demand is the primary drivers and the organization needs to adjust the resource supply through temporarily and permanent resources. When the resource supply is relatively fixed, the organization needs to manage the project demand and sequence project work based on the resource availability and project priority. In many cases, organizations will both adjust the resource supply and manage project demand. Following the supply and demand analysis, an organization can take appropriate action based on the drivers of the portfolio. When demand is the primary driver, the organization needs to adjust the resource supply through temporary and permanent resources. When the resource supply is relatively fixed, the organization needs to manage the project demand and sequence project work based on resource availability and project priority. In many cases, of the organization will both adjust the resource supply and manage project demand.
5.5.2 supply and demand allocation. A prioritize list of portfolio components, decision criteria, and capacity and capability analysis collectively enables effective resource allocation to balance supply against the portfolio demand. The required portfolio resources should be identified according to each initiative, business case, or plan and the inventory of the resources and capabilities aggregated to reflect the demand. This demand is in the map to existing organizational resources, including fund, other tangible and intangible assets, and key human resources, such as program and project management, and project managers, and subject matter expert. A master schedule of resource allocation is necessary to plan and consolidated demand of portfolio resources. At the portfolio management level, the concept of supply and demand takes on wider meaning than what is used at the program and project levels. The goal in managing supply and demand is to ensure that organizations optimally allocate resource capacity against resource requirements or demand based on strategic goals of the organization and the associated portfolio comp composition. Organizations should allocate resources to minimize the both capacity and the under utilizations and over utilizations refer to figure 5-2 on the supply and demand relationship. The ideal outcomes requires diligent iterative resource management and continuous optimization process. Figure 5 does to the relationship between supply, capacity, and demand. So supply capacity versus demand for works. At the top, there is a supply capacity over realization and the realization. And the bottom is demand and equilibrium. Versus time. This is T124. So this is time. The balancing of this demand are resources with the output of the portfolio or the portfolio's resultant value is commonly referred to as capacity balancing, forecasting supply and demand at the portfolio level along with the short-term and long-term planning is key to balancing portfolio capacity over time. Portfolio resources are always constrained to supply and demand needs to be continually reviewed and balance with appropriate approaches. Some organizations assume that there are unlimited resources and that resources can be procured through various channels to satisfy any demand. These are typically projectized organizations. Other organizations assume resource limitation where resources can be available within the range of variability. These organizations are more often functional or matrix organization. In functional and matrix organization, labor resources are used on both project work and operational work. Fluctuations in operational workload have an impact on the availability of resources for work managed within the portfolio. This is one of the main reasons why critical operations or chains thereof should be included in the portfolio, in addition to the program and projects. There is a complex relationship between the types of the resource supply, the, capacity, the capability and productivity of human resources, even when training, background, and experience are similar, can vary widely. Labor rates can vary based on the skill set, experience, industry, organizational structures, and the physical locations of resources. Labor resources can be hired or contracted equipment and physical asset can be purchased, leased or rented, and made available locally or remotely. Every organization has bottleneck resources, which are skill set that are needed on many projects but are in short supply. Bottleneck resources are typically those critical human resources who have an understandings of the business processes and technical or functional knowledge 
with the ability to translate business requirements and evaluate the impact of change. People with this skill set are difficult to hire or contract because of their scarcity and the specific organizational knowledge they are required to have. Specialized equipment or facilities can also be bottleneck resources. The demand of these resources needs to be managed continuously to avoid poor portfolio performance as a result of resource challenges. It can be difficult to accurately determine the demand for resources across a portfolio or program, project and operations at a point in the life cycle before detailed planning has occurred. As portfolio components are selected and planning is conducted, new information regarding resource requirement is often learned. In order to maximize the use of resources, organizations commit resources to authorize portfolio components based on the expected end date of an active portfolio components commonly referred to as soft booking, unexpected delay or unrecognized dependencies between portfolio components can result in situations where a, very, where a resource is not available when expected. Resource allocation should take into account the strategic intent and the forecast value or benefits of the portfolio components when those components are approved for funding, portfolio components with higher expected benefits and a stronger strategic intent should have higher priority over resource allocation when the portfolio components are approved and funded. In addition to the strategic intent and benefits of resource allocation, the organization's risk appetite needs to be taken into account as well to ensure the threat and opportunity threat should be continually identified and monitored during portfolio execution and appropriate strategies for risk resource leveling and bottleneck should be implemented in timely fashion to minimize any adverse impact on portfolio performance. Resource allocations for the portfolio need to be continually reviewed and analyzed during the portfolio execution for adjustment and course correction while striving for an optimal balance between supply and demand at the aggregate portfolio level, thus confirming that the expected portfolio value is preserved and maximized. Program and project change requests should be approved considering the impact on resource management at the portfolio level to other components of the portfolio. Supply and demand optimization. Supply and demand optimization involves ongoing measurement and monitoring of resource for needed course correction and adjustment during portfolio execution. Continual and ongoing monitoring of the supply and demand relationship is critical to the success of the portfolio. The portfolio manager analyzes information regarding resource utilization and changing resource requirements of the active portfolio components as well as the resource need for plan and approve portfolio components against the availability of resources. The portfolio manager then allocates the resources in such a way doing the right project at the right time when the right resources that the right resources are identified and match to the right project at the right time. When resources are constrained, the organization may be unavailable to accomplish the plan components and may need to reprioritize portfolio components. In portfolio execution, it is critical for the portfolio manager to maintain a close alignment and balance between risk appetite and resource capacity and capability to ensure that adequate resource capacity and capability are available to manage the portfolio within the tolerated risk exposure level. It is important that the relationship among resources, portfolio candidates, and any associated risk are clearly identified and managed throughout the portfolio execution. Mitigating strategies or optimization measures are put in place to preserve and expected value and benefits of the portfolio. Important metrics, key trends, and patterns 
and lesson learned should be captured as part of measuring and monitoring process. This enables the organization to build a knowledge-based repository and organizational assets that can be extremely valuable for future use in capacity and capability planning. In order to succeed with this challenge, organizations should implement a learned structure and robust challenge chains management processes to drive agility, effectiveness, and timeliness in response to action and their associated decision, effective end-to-end -end chains management, which includes identification, impact assessment, communication, disposition, and execution, is critical for ensuring portfolio value and associated benefits, chains to portfolio components such as overruns, chains to scope termination, and risk scheduling drive, resource optimization, and balancing. The portfolio management team needs to identify resource impact the result from portfolio components chains and portfolio manager needs to communicate with and gain concurrence on the consequential schedule chains from portfolio stakeholder to ensure optimal portfolio performance. Such chains can be made easily when the robust monitoring and control system is in place so portfolio decision makers know the current state of the portfolio variance to the plan and the path towards fulfillment of strategic objectives and goal, proactive and continuous engagement with the portfolio stakeholder and a focus on capacity and capability are extremely important and beneficial in identifying and evaluating any potential risk or issues related to resources. Once risk or issues are identified and evaluated, a plan risk response approach can be formulated and implemented, thus avoiding expensive stoppage or disruption. Conversely, surplus availability of resources can also lead to advancing some of the portfolio components. 5.7 Organizational Capabilities a capability is the ability of the organizations through its people, processes, and system to execute an entire portfolio of initiatives for delivering goods and service. Capability creates competence that provides a competitive advantage in the market and deliver a desired customer value, propositions, and the achievements of the organization's goal and objectives. Because organizations' capability deals with competence that are employed or exist, exercised through internal process and system, an evolutionary path exists when followed. This path allows the organization to become more organization organized, more systematic, and more mature. Over time, as organizational capabilities mature, what gets done shifts from the reliance on the heroic and or talent of individual people towards documented and standardized process and system. Capabilities differ from capacity in the capacity is how much the organization can do now at the present time while capability refers to the potential of the organization that may or may not be exploited. In addition, capability may indicate the ability of the organizations to ramp up required resources to execute work when the capacity is at a shortfall at a point in time. The sum total of all characteristics represents the sum total of all resource attributes and represents the organization capability, while the sum total of realized or actuated resource attribute is the organization's capacity. Synergy also plays into the equation. The sum of resource attribute is not a simple mathematical equation. In complex system, the sum of attributes may be less or greater than the whole, and this complex relationship is what makes balancing capacity and capability within the portfolio so difficult. 5.8 Capability Assessment a capability assessment is an internal analysis regarding what the organization has or does not have and what it can and cannot do. In other words, 
a capability assessment analyze strengths and weaknesses with respect to resources, those aiding with the selection, funding executions, and optimizations of the portfolio. Strength are capabilities that the organization possess and has developed, which can be exploited and developed into sustainable competitiveness, competitive advantage, and targeted value proposition. Not all strength have the potential to become a sustainable competitive advantage, but they still provide competitive parity. Weaknesses are capabilities that are lacking or deficient and prevent the organizations from developing a sustainable competitive advantage. The organization needs to address significant weaknesses that hinder the organizations from developing sustainable competitive advantage. An assessment can provide the organizations with valuable information to gain an understanding of the current state of the organization, identify gaps between the existing and desired capabilities of the organization, receive a fact-based early warning of potential roadblocks to portfolio management success, evaluate organizational agility, Learn what needs to be done and when to achieve organizational goal. Positions the organizations to address capability gaps in advance rather than react to them when they emerge. Discover how, when, and where to apply critical resource for long-term success. And develop facts based on recommendations and a realistic plan for achieving and sustain full organizational capacity capability. 5.9 Capability Development Organization continue to assess and evaluate their environment to identify new capabilities to develop or sustain existing capabilities in line with business strategy and market condition. 5.9.1 Developing new capability Developing organizational and individual capabilities depends on maintaining, improving, or developing requisite Competencies. Competence are individual characteristic, including knowledge, skills, ability, self-image, threat, mindset, feelings, and way of thinking, which, when used with appropriate roles, achieve a desired result. Individual or collective performance based on the set of competencies creates a positive impact on business outcomes. Key desirable competencies includes Expertise in managing human resources, relationship management, resulting skills, leadership, and ability to navigate organizational boundaries. Communication skills, effective and dealing with global and cultural issue, ethical behavior ability, ability to evaluate information to make critical decision, and business acumen. The challenge for any organization is to build capabilities before competitors do. However, other drivers can motivate organizations to create new capabilities or expand their existing capabilities. These drivers include organization culture, customer demand, long-term shifting market and trend, and response to an urgent external or internal event. Before detailed planning has occurred, it can be difficult to predict the demand for resource across a portfolio of program, project, and operation. As the portfolio manager and stakeholder select portfolio components and conduct detailed planning, new information regarding need, resources, and capabilities is often uncovered. There are several capability elements that organizations should keep in mind as they consider building the capabilities needed to support the organization's and portfolio strategy. This includes the following mission, talent, process, technology, integration, and insight. Mission, propose of the capability how it will operate and what it will be delivered so as derived from the organization's strategy. Talent, skills, incentives, and workforce planning that enables an optimal talent base to execute the capability. Process, an integrated set of processes 
and activities used to achieve the desired outcomes. Technology system requires to support and develop and sustainment of the capability. Integration, clear rules, resistance rights, and policies that inform organizational structure, insight, information analytics, and decision flow that drives inform, inform and timely decision making. Organizations often face the strategic challenge of determining how to deploy their limited resources, not only to the build capabilities to achieve a competitive advance advantage, but also to make that advantage sustainable. It is important to understand the capabilities are generally interdependent organizations should target an optimal set of capabilities for primary attention. However, these limited resources can be stretched to build sustainable capabilities by focusing on capabilities that are interconnected. For example, to build speed, an organization will likely need to target fast learning, fast innovation, or fast collaboration. As one capability improves, it will in turn probably improve others. Improved capabilities enhance leadership characteristics. So working to improve any one capability builds leadership potential. As the quality of leadership improves, talent and collaboration issues often surface and in the process of resolving those problems, the organizations usually strengthen its accountability and learning. 5.9.2 Sustaining Existing Capabilities to enhance the sustainability of the competitive advantage of the capability, managers should work to embed the capabilities throughout different interconnected and hierarchical process within the organization that is address the process technology and integration capability elements by establishing a formal system or rules and organizational hierarchies to shape deliberative decision-making regarding the use of the capability and organizations can enhance the sustainability of its capabilities. Sustaining capability also requires gaining insight via regular checkpoint. This checkpoint includes conducting capability audit to help gauge and ultimately boost the status of the organization's capabilities as well as measuring benefits realization associated with a new enhanced capability. 5.10 Performance Reporting and Analytics Performance reporting and analytics involves identifying, capturing, and distributing data and associated analysis for progress, update trend, and pattern to aid with portfolio decision-making, suitability, selections, and frequency of the capacity and capability-related metrics are driven by the size, complexity, and nature of the portfolio and organizational culture. Although capacity and capability-related metrics have vital importance throughout portfolio management, they are immersely valuable in building a knowledge base of historical data that can be leveraged in future strategic planning cycles or portfolio management activities. 5.11 Balance Capacity and Capability Capacity and capability requires balancing or effective portfolio executions and optimization, attaining strategic goals and objectives, and delivering value to the organization. Organizational change management is a key to managing optimal balance of capacity and capability of portfolio needs. Project and programs are driven by requirements that seek to fill capability gap related to some product, service, or organizational capability. Requirements are balanced via project processes to deliver an optimized solution. Similarly, at the portfolio level, capability gaps are reduced through a balancing of capacity and capability. The Balance Act at the portfolio level does not involve trade-off between requirements Rather, it involves resource strengths to balance the organizational potential. Its use 
of its capabilities in its current operating state and its capacity. Balancing does not necessarily mean a maximiz maximization of capacity to achieve an organization's theoretical capability. The goal is not to minimize the capability gap without regards to other factor. Balancing capacity and capability is not a simple task because it is part of the complex system. Within complex system, organizations need to consider many interrelationships. Balancing capacity and capability involves the integrations of organizational strategic plan, organizational process assets, portfolio process assets, and enterprise environmental factor. Dynamic capability and capacity is crucial to innovation. Balancing dynamic capacity and capability is especially difficult because it deals primarily with personal or soft skills as part of this balancing process. Capacity and capability gaps are filed but not necessarily minimized across all areas. This is the end of risk management second stage page seven page 41 to 72 so for the next uh, recorded we will go to chapter six portfolio stakeholder engagement so end of this from page 40 to page 72 per standard for portfolio management is the continuations of chapter 3 of project portfolio management. This is a portfolio strategic management. Portfolio strategic management is the management of intended and emergent initiatives that are often individual at an executive level and provide and very fabric under the portfolio management is executed. It supports strategic thinking and is the basis of an effective organizations or business unit strategic thinking simply means asking are we doing the right things more precisely it means accessing whether the right things is being done using the three key requirements number one a pro profound understanding of the associated environment a bit to full alignment of all portfolio components with the visions and values of the organization and uh, creativity is developing effective response to forces and changes that affect the fulfillment of the purpose. In the context of a portfolio, strategic thinking is captured in the strategic portfolio management plan. This section provides information on portfolio strategic management the following major sector are addressed overview guiding principles portfolio strategic objectives developing portfolio strategic objectives strategic risk appetite portfolio charter portfolio roadmap key portfolio components portfolio optimization managing strategic alignment Number 3.1 overview. Alignment is strategic management and portfolio management enables the six actions of an organization to be consistent with the expectations of senior management and stakeholder. Without this, there is a high risk that a portfolio will not match the overall strategy and that the program's project being undertaken will add little or no value certainly less value than is expected portfolio strategic management should be considered a two-way precise in addition to the continual monitoring of strategy and investment decisions at the executive level and practice should be provided feedback on the impact and viability of such strategic decision and potential outcomes. 
3.2 guiding principles. To successfully manage a portfolio, strategic approach, at a mindful of the organization strategic plan, goals, and objective needs to be undertaken, unlike what is done in program or project management, in strategic management, the portfolio manager needs to maintain a long-term vision or in order to execute sound practice of decision-making, risk management, and value management, among other organizational considerations of all principles outlined in Section 1.7 are important for strategic management. However, the following are especially applicable to this domain. Achieve excellence in strategic execution. Ensure that investment in portfolio components are aligned with the organizational strategy and governance practices. Balance portfolio value against overall risk. Foster a culture that embraces change and risk. Negative complexity to enable successful outcomes. Continuous acquire talent and implement professional talent management. Strategic management not only oversees and performance of the portfolio components, it also plays an important role in providing feedback to all stakeholders on the success of the organization's strategies and the viability of its long-term goals and objectives. 3.3 Portfolio Strategic Objectives The portfolio strategic planning process consists of developing a portfolio strategic plan and alignment, aligning the strategic management of the portfolio to the organization's strategy and objectives. The portfolio strategic plan explains the key components of the portfolio management life cycle, describing the key initiation, decision, planning, criteria, governance, and optimization. Considerations and execution element the portfolio strategic plan is used to align organizational and financial structure with priorities, mission, and vision, and objectives. Typically, a portfolio strategic plan includes a vision and a mission statement, a description of the organization's long-term portfolio goals and objectives, and the means of which are the organization plan to achieve these general goals and objectives. The portfolio strategic plan should also provide performance indicators and target metrics to allow assessment of ongoing strategic alignment and tracking the progress towards achieving the strategic objectives. The portfolio strategic plan may also identify external factors that may affect the achievements of long-term portfolio goals. When defining the portfolio structure, it is important to understand the overall strategy to ensure that the right components within those business areas with the highest strategic value are included. It is also important to ensure that everyone goals of the portfolio strategic plan has at least one initiative that would lead to its realization and that the summation of the initiative outcomes under a specific strategic goal leads to 100% realizations of that strategic goals benefits. Therefore, an organization's portfolio should cover 100% of the organization's strategic goals and only the organization's strategic goals, meaning that any initiative that do not serve a specific strategic goal should be terminated. Evaluating and describing how the portfolio management activity will be aligned with the overall strategy is what defines the portfolio strategic plan, plan based on process, actions, and element that support this evaluation and its implementation. The process actions and elements include things such as portfolio management objectives, prioritization, allocations of fund, organizational benefits, performance expectation, resources, assumptions, constraints, dependencies, risk, and requirements. 
Additionally, managing a portfolio is not a specific and time-bound process so that expected result of the portfolio are not bound to its component but instead to what they deliver in terms of result. The portfolio strategic plan is produced using organizational strategy, vision, and objectives. The portfolio manager collaborates with the management in the governing bodies and with the stakeholder in the development of the plan. The portfolio strategic plan may support the strategic for organizational, organizational unit or function. Organizational strategy is implemented through portfolio components and ongoing operation. When producing the portfolio strategic plan, the portfolio manager integrates and responds to change in the portfolio when remaining aligned with the organizational strategy vision and objectives 3.4 developing portfolio strategic objectives after this broadest strategic objectives serve to define an organization's ambition in some details the organization's ambitions is found in its mission and vision statement which together describe the main purpose of an organization and its ultimate goal, they are the steps and accomplishment that an organization complete to realize that ultimate goal. Strategic objectives from the backbone of a strategic plan, they represent specific short-term action, one to two years, that are the result of the vision, typically five or more years, and goals, usually three or more years. A strategic objectives statement should outline what is to be achieved and the overall approach that will be taken to achieve it and the benefits of the achieving it that should focus on what is offered to customer. The critical elements in a strategic objectives are measurability and create and clarity. Crucially, the strategic objective is guided by the organization mission. 3.4.1 Vision and Mission Statement Vision and mission statement should be a single thought that can be easily understood. The strategic vision statement describes where the business sees itself based on the chosen strategy. The strategic mission statement explains the overall approach for achieving this vision. To test the effectiveness of the mission statement, associated leaders, managers, and employees should be able to easily describe the vision and mission of the business in simple terms. If they cannot articulate the vision or mission, then the statement is of little use. The vision and mission guide the everybody activities of every person involved in the business to be effective and the statement need to be short and simple, capturing the essence of what the business wishes to accomplish. The vision and mission statement build the whole culture of the organization. The difference between a vision statement and the mission statement is a vision is what the company aspired to be and the mission is what the company is in business to do. A vision statement is an aspirational mental picture of the value the organization hopes to achieve over time regardless of change in leadership. It offers a shared view of the future that excites employee. A mission statement tells what the company is currently in business to do, who it does it for, and how it defines an organization represents statement and its approach for the next few years. Mission statement may get refined as a customer and their needs change. All employees should be able to articulate an organization's mission statement so they can see how their works align with them with the valuable contributes to this mission. It also helps them understand and accept the organization's why decision. A simple vision statement might be, our vision is world without cancer. 
a simple mission statement might be our mission is to deliver outstanding value by providing high quality fishing gear to satisfy the needs of our customer and to do so the lowest position cost 3.4.2 is strategic goal. Goals are general statements indicating what is to be achieved. So they should be integrated with the vision. Goals are more qualitative statement rather than quantitative, quantifiable target. And they also need to be integrated with the mission which describes how the organization will achieve its vision. Some examples of strategic goals are to capture a bigger market share, enter a new market, comply with regulatory requirements, improve profitability, increase efficiency, provide better customer service, improve employee training, and improve customer satisfaction. A strategic goal should be all of the following understandable suitable acceptable and flexible understandable it is stated simply and easy to understood suitable does it fit with the vision and mission acceptable does it fit with the values of the organizations and the employees flexible can it be adapted and changed as needed your strategic goal should always center on the most important priorities of the organization to avoid losing focus and they should be designed in such a way that they don't contradict or interfere with one another. Strategic objectives, whereas the vision describes the goal, a strategy is choice about how to reach that goal. Strategic objective can therefore be split into categorize, for example, profitability, compliance, 